Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video and today we are going to get hands on with the upcoming Camp Shelters feature that is currently live on the PTS. So let's jump in and take a look at this thing, shall we? Okay then, so before we dive in, a couple of uh, orders of business. First things first, the obligatory spoiler warning. Obviously we are on the public test server today. So the content that we are looking at is unreleased. It is in its very earliest phases of uh, public testing. So we will expect to see a few bugs and a few bits and pieces that are not perhaps uh, in their finished state. It is uh, par for the course at this stage. And I know I've encountered a couple already, so bear that one in mind. There are no story spoilers in this video, but uh, if you do want to avoid seeing any unreleased content, then this is the opportune moment to be backing out. So there is your spoiler warning. So. Following up from Thursday's video, we got our Inside the Vault post on Thursday talking about the Camp Shelters uh, feature, and to be honest, my first impressions are not that great. Based on what we saw there, it looks basically like a glorified uh, vault decorating simulator with a couple of pre-made vault rooms, three to be exact, so far, that we can then go in and decorate, but not to a vast amount more with, which is um, fine if you just want space to decorate, but for those of us who are hardcore into the building side of things and really want to create our own spaces and really make them our own that's pretty limited so hopefully this will be a bit more detailed and uh, we can actually do a little bit more but we'll find out in a moment so the other side of things that i did mention there was obviously that uh, this is at least a partially paid update well, everybody will get the first vault room free that's the vault utility room so that's available to everybody at no cost but subsequent rooms subsequent spaces are paid atomic shot items so fallout first members are getting a bit more of themselves as well so i kind of understand that um, obviously this is potentially going to involve up to 72 micro servers for every single main world. So basically you can have three shelters in any given camp. So if every player's got three of them uh, on the same server, 72. So obviously that's going to require a lot more server hardware. Therefore uh, Amazon are obviously going to pass that cost on to Bethesda who are offsetting some of that by making some of these items uh, Atomic Shop based. So. I'm okay with that. I do wish Bethesda had been a little bit more upfront about this. Um, as I said on Thursday, they basically allowed us to believe, I think is probably a fair way of putting it, that uh, this was going to be an entirely free update. And the basic part of it is, but obviously it's also partially paid as well. So mixed feelings there. I think they could have been a little bit more open about it. It's kind of not the sort of thing most businesses do, to be honest, but just because most businesses don't doesn't mean that they shouldn't. So it's one of those. But I do kind of understand it, so somewhat mixed feelings there, but I can live with that. So, with all that out of the way, let's jump in and see what the actual deal is with this. In one of my favourite locations, if you're particularly curious, this is where we are on the map, right here. Point Pleasant, that's about 76. Just over this ridge here. So, my highly advanced starter camp. <laughs> Somewhere we can just test out the external features. So, we're going to jump in. This is the entrance to the vault utility room, so this is the free room that everybody has access to. Just a little hatch. Do kind of wish it was just the metal bit and not the um, stone bit underneath, the concrete bit. Uh, especially as we can't actually sink this into the foundation, so it would be nice if the, there were a few more options. Hopefully there will be on, going on and once the thing goes live, but for now this is a bit awkward because who wants us sticking out in the middle of your camp? So, not ideal, but that is our... Um, doorway to get into the free vault utility room so we'll uh, drop this down I think let's put it down over here that should help nice so going up to the next one that's right in my face this is the one of the two entrances to the paid areas it's the smaller one that will obviously look better inside a camp but these two look the same for now it's the lobby shelter entrance and there's the atrium one as well the lobby is the medium sized one that Fallout first members are getting for free and that everybody else will be able to pick up in the atomic shop a little while later. And the atrium will be the large, largest space of the three that everybody will be able to pick up from the atomic shop when the update goes live. So here's the lobby. Let's just drop this in here. Now I have had a few issues getting these to place. You can see it's a little temperamental. So a little persuasion may be required. Hopefully the will do some fine tuning on that and improve it, but this is a test build after all. Come on. That's not quite what I had in mind. How about here? No. Hmm. 
yep, still being awkward, but as we say, test build, so a few issues are kind of to be expected. Let's try a thing. So, here is a nice shiny wooden wall. I'll go there. So if we take a close look at this, see it's flat on the back with nothing behind it, so it doesn't snap into a regular wall. But it will kind of press up against the wall just fine like that, which is fine. That, that works. You could probably glitch in if you wanted to. It's, apparently it doesn't work. So that's slightly annoying, but I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I had this working earlier, so it's been a bit of a pain now. Okay, that'll do for now. You have to take my word for it. It will press up against the wall normally. It's just uh, test server bugbears at the moment. So that's the first two. And we also have the big one. So we're going to use this for our atrium entrance, because why not? Huge get vault store, which is absolutely massive, as you can clearly see. It's a bit awkward to place, so hopefully Bethesda will work on that. We can drop that in there, hopefully. There we go. That's massive, crazy, and more than a little obnoxious, if I'm honest. But on the other hand, if you want the uh, vault shelters to be the primary focus of your camp, then... Well, the Cap shelters, rather. That's maybe not such a bad thing. Push that back a bit. Should sink in if I kind of re-angle things a bit. Should sink into the ground a little bit and be a little less insane. That's still pretty crazy, but uh, <laughs> that is what it is. See, I've set a couple of lights up so you can actually uh, see what's going on there. See if we can rearrange this a little bit. A little bit, apparently. So that'll do. That's not too bad. So, let's have a little look at the inside of these spaces first and foremost. Vault utility room, first of all, because this is the free one everyone's going to have access to. So, here we go. We are inside the uh, shelter, the first space. So, logged into what is basically the entrance to... A vault corridor from the look of this. I like the flooring. Textures look pretty good on the whole. Got some basic lighting in place already. A little look around. It's not a huge space, but it, it's okay. So you've got a little bit of basic lighting in already. The uh, water dripping down makes it look like an and the sparking here as well. Makes it look like an abandoned vault that you've kind of stumbled across. Kind of a bunker vibe given the way we got in here. So that's not bad. It's quite a cool start. Um, yeah. For the free one, the starting point, that's okay. It's a decent sized space. So let's hop out and have a look at the other ones. Okay, so we're back outside and obviously right by the entrance here. So respawns us back into the world in a very sensible place. So that's a good start as well. And this is the lobby door, the one we, the lobby door we're using. There is one of these as well, but we'll stick with this for the moment. Have a look at this one. This will be the one that is available to Fallout First members uh, included in their membership once the patch goes live, and for the rest of us a little later on. Obviously via the Atomic Shop there. And here we go. So this is considerably more interesting. Obviously it's the paid space, so... Uh, well, the first of the two paid spaces, so that's about what we'd expect. Got a, a full-size vault door here for our way in and out. There's the exit to Appalachia. Got the mechanism there. Again, we've still got some dripping going on. It's a surprisingly good nick, considering it's also got leaks, but... Uh, yeah, mixed feelings about that. Obviously, that kind of limits how clean you can go. We're we'll head up to this upper area. Different levels is pretty cool. Something's sparking around there. I can't see what, but maybe it's under here. There we go, it is. And we have a back room as well. Again, this doesn't really go anywhere beyond this, but it's a space to decorate, create, make your own. Bit bigger, bit more interesting than the uh, utility room, but we would expect that of a paid space. But yeah, that's not too shabby. Again, okay, free for Fallout first members. And the rest of us will be able to pick it up not too long afterwards from the Atomic Shop. Okay, so back outside. And we'll have a look at the Vault Atrium. Which is 
I think this must be trees clipping through that have not properly been bulldozed I'm going with here, because I don't think that's supposed to be part of it. <laughs> but let's have a look inside anyway. Wondered if it was going to work for a moment there. It has. <laughs> so here we go, the vault atrium. So this is the one that we saw pictures of on a Thursday. Like it's been a bit weird there from an angle. Hmm. About what we'd expect on the... Uh, server there. So this is quite tall. It's quite a big bit of room in here. I'm not crouched or anything. So it's pretty huge. See the photos we saw on Thursday were sort of taken from this angle. So a fair bit of room. You can come up to this upper level. I thought this might run all the way along and the uh, entrance might be up here or something or possibly down there but nope. That's our entrance down there. Very small little entrance to this place though kind of uh, defies logic a little bit. Having a much larger one would make more sense. But it is what it is for now. There we go. Still not in 100% fantastic condition, but fairly good. I'm going to head through the stairs here. I really like this corridor, though, I have to admit. The look of this place is very, very cool. Like, the atmosphere is nice. So that is pretty cool. And we're going to head into the overseer's office, looking very slick. And I've got a good bit of space up here, you do a fair bit with that. Not too bad. So, we're going to head through this window, because you can, beware, it's a long drop. Got away with it there, but that is quite a long way down. So, let's bounce back over to a couple of the others, and uh, have a little poke around with some of the building mechanics first and foremost. And we'll actually start to look at some of the things that I'm really not happy about here, so do this question that was asked the other day in uh, the comments is um, whether or not you can build doors to connect your instances within your instance so your different vault rooms so there we go that behaved itself I did have an issue with stuff floating a lot when it was on these uh, metal rails earlier when I was poking around so there is a door to the lobby and I suppose we might as well for the moment Drop one of these in as well, and then we can get through to the vault utility room. That works for me. We'll head to the utility room, as that's where everybody's going to be at first, anyway. At least, the majority of people. So there we go. Back to the utility room. No re need to head back out into the main game world. That's quite cool. I approve of this. So here we are. Quite dingy in here compared to the other two. But we can always add our own lights. And here, as I say, we get to one good thing and some questionable things. So, some of the building rules have been removed in shelters so you can build more freely. Yeah, don't entirely count on that. But, this is a very cool thing. To toggle workshop object snapping rules in shelters, press R in the case of the PC. While in workshop mode, to inside a shelter. So, we can turn snapping on and off, which is very, very cool. So, I'm going to get over to walls. So you see, we can snap things in, as usual. There we go. No need to worry about resources, which is cool for the moment while we're on the PTS. Will when it goes live, obviously. And we can also press the R button, turn the snapping off, it's here in the bottom left there. Now I can literally place this any which way I like. So if I want to do... go with inverting these and putting them at about a 45 degree instead of a 90 degree angle as we can see that also kind of works perhaps a better way of showing this might be if I dump that over there for the minute that over there we go and put a door in and put the snapping on again for the moment so we can kind of have it lock in place oh that wasn't the plan I'll snap again where I, where I wanted you. Oh, I've accidentally turned it off again. That's the problem. Okay, so I was slightly cockeyed and this thing's straight now. Okay, so we uh, grab this and we turn the snapping off. We can now build a slightly more interesting shape more easily. Yeah. Come on. There we go. So 
That's kind of cool. That's a nice little feature. I approve of that a lot. <laughs> so let's have a look at roofs. So with the snapping off, this is apparently not going to do anything. So we're going to have to do put some snapping on there. Come on. We had it a minute ago. Okay, so this is already looking like it might be an issue. Yep, it's not on the outside, no. So whether or not this is a test server thing or a shortcoming of the design, I don't know. Okay. Come on. First one worked, so you should. Come on, we had you there a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's typical, isn't it? If it's done snapping off now, oh, it's because misbehave again. What if I try and persuade it manually? Will it work then? No, it's still going to be a bit temperamental, apparently. So, still a fair few limitations, but when we've got considerably more time to play around with that, hopefully that will allow for some increased flexibility. However, we do get into a couple of areas that are significantly more problematic. First and foremost, I'm still very, very disappointed that all we have to build in is a pre-existing structure. As basically we can see here, I'm going to stick these walls down. Actually, let's get a bit more light on this situation first. Uh, I've not got the snapping on, so... Come on, find yourself a place. That'll do. So I'll snap that in. You can see, this already does not look like it belongs in here. I would imagine that on down the line, Bethesda will be giving us some... Uh, vault pieces, so we can actually build with something that looks like it does belong in here. But that doesn't. We also have a couple of other issues. So we've got, we've got a second one here, so that's not too bad. And that primarily being this. And that. And this. The walls do not reach the sides of the vault. So if you want to partition something off, you can't. And even if we turn the snapping off, try and push things together, that's not going to do. What well, if we head around the other side? Okay, that's still jumping up from the wall there. Kinda works. But ignoring the fact that the wood just doesn't look like it belongs, that's pretty inadequate, really. And obviously if I snap another one on here, which I can't do right now, so put the snapping back on, should behave itself. It still won't snap to the side of this, possibly because of how close it is. Let's try this again. It's right there. So I still can't snap onto this, it's got to snap to the floor. Uh, well, it won't snap at all with the snapping off, so that's probably a thing. So this is snapping to the floor, and it's still not snapping to that wall which has been positioned without the snapping on. So that's kind of useless. I mean, you can manually place everything, so that works. But um, in terms of plugging up the gaps and having things actually reach to the sides or to the ceiling, that's kind of a no-go at the minute. So I'm not particularly impressed by that. So while we're here, two other things that I'm very not impressed by, or at least one so far anyway, it says I can place something in here, which is interesting, but if I actually walk out there, I'm not going to be able to. So let's try it with the stash box. Interesting, I can place it in there, but it's telling me this is not within the buildable area. So let's see if it is actually going to cancel my ability to build. Okay, it doesn't look like it is. I'm guessing these are two separate buildable areas. 
possibly that share the same budget. Because just passing through that door seems to uh, bring up what is apparently a bug. So that's an improvement. I was a little concerned because I thought I wasn't going to be able to build in this space at all. And that would have been very, very rubbish. But we can, so that's cool. We'll, uh, we'll let that one go. So we've got a reasonable space to decorate in. But as I say, building right now, not really worth bothering with. So, bang this down over... Uh, uh, no, this is where we already are, so there's no point in having that. So, let's... Over here? What have we got here? Lobby. Let's put the lobby on this side. And the atrium over here. Okay, so we now move between the various areas. Just to make life a little bit easier. Let's have a look at the lobby. So, once again, back in the lobby, as I say, this is the Fallout first stroke paid one when the timer expires on that. The exclusivity thing, I suppose. Once again, here, we can build. We can build just about anywhere, which is very, very cool. It doesn't seem to be the same uh, you are leaving the buildable area warning when I pass through here, which is a bonus. So I'm going to go with test server issue there. That's fine. We can live with that. And once again, getting the reminder. Don't need that every single time. Uh, walls. So we can get things snapping in down here. We'll be able to place them down here, particularly in um, with the snapping toggled off, which is great. But basically the only area we can snap to would appear to be this thing, so... Other things can be done, but that's not ideal. But one thing that is a slight issue here, once again, we still have the same issue with getting stuff close to the walls. As we will in the atrium as well, because it'll go there, and oh look, the same problem applies at the other end. And if we change this up, put that on the top, we can get three high. But, I think if we actually get up here and have a look, we'll see it's not really meeting the ceiling. It's close, closer than it was in the other room, actually doesn't look quite as bad. But it's not quite where we wanted it either. I got the impression when I did this over here that it was even further away, but let's have a look. Okay, so that's reasonably close. I mean, the wood still looks ridiculous in here, but... Yeah, you see, you can see right over the top there. So that's something Bethesda definitely need to do something about. Either resizing the space a little bit, or adding some additional flexibility to the uh, the building. Because, yeah, that's not going to work. If they're going to have this non-snapping thing going on, I would like to see them uh, removing a degree of the collision -ish aspect as well, so that we basically take two walls and push them into each other. So, you know what I mean. Oh, I don't screw around. So we're going to put that there. And I can kind of, as we saw earlier, put this at an angle, but you see it's now going red, so if I nudge it out a bit, that works. But if they soften that up a little bit, obviously we can't do anything here to plug this gap. So if they would allow us to basically clip these together, as we used to with, say, the old rug glitch back in Fallout 4, or place anywhere if you were into that sort of thing, That's weird. Floating walls you can do, apparently. That's cool. So that that's not so bad. Obviously not if you've got the uh, snapping on. No, but you can do it if you do have the snapping on as well. Okay. What happens if we snap it? Then move it. Okay. That's interesting. Didn't realise that was a thing. So yeah, working on the collision and these gaps at the sides would be a significant improvement. Some vault beam pieces would be a significant improvement. You can build in here, you can kind of work with it, and there are some restrictions lifted as well. So, uh, there's a bit more room to get creative than I was thinking there was going to be. Let's say, once again, when we come in here, we can really see the pronounced issue again, uh, not the snapping off again, of trying to plug these gaps up, because, again... Nothing much we can do with that. Same thing happens at the back as well. There is somewhere here. 
There we go. You can put one there, but to have it actually fit, it's not going to work. And obviously these things are only snapping to the floor, not to each other. Um, again, we can play some floating, but swings around about. So still room for some polish in there, I think. So, let's transfer back over to the atrium. What have we got here? That's the atrium entrance. This is where I had some floating issues before. That's working okay now. I actually did it over there and it kind of jumped halfway up the wall, which was a bit weird. And... I'll we'll stop one of these in the corner as well. Get back to the lobby. The um, utility room, rather. Head over to the atrium. Okay. So, atrium is much bigger. We've still got our entrances over here. Clearly those stayed. Uh... Okay, it looked like it was floating there. It's not. That's fine. But it popped up in my absence. So... Up here, you can do a few things. For example, we still have the same rules and freedoms as we had in the other space. If we go over to the floors, for example, these will snap on here just fine. Which is cool. So if you feel that that's uh, not for you, you'd like to put some kind of roof on and have that bit divided off, you can. We can also plug up the gap a bit more easily here. Obviously, if you come down to the bottom level, once again, we hit the same issues we had all along. And that actually decides to snap in. There we go. It'll sit snugly there, but... You know. That's kind of annoying. And again, we have the same problem here. If I jump back up the top, go back to the floors... get these dropped in and these will run most of the way along unfortunately we still don't have textures for these apart from the uh, farmable tiles which I will make a small point about in just a moment so let's put one of those in so I don't forget yeah if we snap those in and plug those gaps. It also fits okay here, which is quite cool. And it will run all the way along. So that's nice. Still leaves us with the gaps underneath, which kind of sucks. And these won't match any additional floor textures you put in. And that kind of sucks. What also kind of sucks is this. Those pipes are in the way. I mean, can we get it to go in there with the snapping off? Doesn't really look like it. I, mean, I could put it there. That's pretty rubbish. So, all in all, if they get some vault pieces in here and actually make things so that we can mesh them up with the walls, maybe clip them into each other, then the building flexibility is better than I thought it was going to be. In fact, having a, another run around through this, I'm still finding bits and pieces that I hadn't noticed before, so I'm feeling better than I did on Thursday about this, I have to admit. That's cool. One thing that is either daft or possibly a test server thing or a bit weird, though, is... Farmable dirt tiles. Very, very nice. Wonderful. We can build these inside. Floors, walls, roofs, stairs, doors, crafting turrets, traps, defences, generators, power connectors, lights, appliances, beds, chairs, stash boxes, floor decor, shelves, tables, wall decor, miscellaneous structures, shelters. Wait a minute. Where's the food? Yeah. So I'm imagining they're either going to take floor tiles out, or more likely, put food into the menu eventually. This is, I would assume, a oversight. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but um, for now, you can build your greenhouse in here if you like, because those are actually unlocked as well. If we have a look. Still with the same issues. Looks cool. It really makes me want to get to that rank 99 in um, armor race. But if I then go and put a farm all the tile down here, which apparently I can do, kind of. I'm not with intersecting apparently. Let's try putting. 
go back to our previous demonstration, John. Roofs, we've got glass roofs on there. Yep. What about these ones? Nothing in there. Nothing in there either, yeah. So, uh, our options are a bit limited for now on this, so we'll go flat, shall we? Walls. We have to have a doorway, aren't we? There we are. So we can build a greenhouse in here. We might need to do something about the lighting. But you can't put any crops in, then you do. For now. So, uh, hopefully that is something that we'll be changing. The other slight bugbear is that if I want to build some lights... Where are we? Um, find a nice standing lamp or something like that. That'll do. Wonderful. Requires power. Those ones don't, but this one does. So the same power system uh, as the base thing exists, which is not really surprising, but it's a tad illogical given that there clearly is power. Also, we can't do anything about the, the existing lighting either, so if you don't like this stuff as it is, you're still stuck with it. For the sake of uh, demonstration, let's turn off my pit boy light. So yeah, you're going to have to work with this. So that's not ideal. Another well, cool thing I do want to just double check on. Yep, we can decorate this corridor as well, so that's cool. I like that. Okay then, so that is basically everything I've got to say on the subject for the moment. Uh, a few slightly weird things aside, as we can clearly see here. <laughs> there is clearly some increased flexibility, which is good. I was a little worried there wasn't going to be, um, and there is. Like The ability to place things in midair like this is absurd, and I can't see myself using it that often, particularly in this kind of a space, but that's not so bad. Obviously, um, the utility room is the smallest one, that's the one that's free, it's not really surprising. It's also the darkest, which on the surface of it might be a bad thing, but you can also got more freedom to design your own lighting in there than you have perhaps in the lobby or the atrium, so there is that. So you can perhaps customise a little bit more, but it's also the space that is least well adapted to building in. Um, so, as far as my concerns about it being a vault decorating sim, there's a bit more to it than that, and that's good. However, I still do feel that uh, a prefabbed vault room, like, say, the one we are currently floating in right now, uh, is not what we wanted, really. or certainly not what I wanted, and judging by the um, PTS forums, it's not what a lot of players on there wanted either. Which is basically to say, a space we can really get to grips with and build our own thing in. Uh, no matter what we build in these spaces, we're still building in a vault. You can build the most absurd and creative and wonderful and wacky structure you like, you're still building it inside a vault is not necessarily what we wanted. That being said, I'm going to throw a link up on the screen, well, a picture rather, up on the screen somewhere around now, and you can have a quick look at that, because this is something that's been pulled out the data mines already. Yes, yeah, so this was pulled out on Thursday night, and it basically indicates that there are going to be a few different styles of camp shelters, so not just vaults, there's going to be some Brotherhood Steel bunkers, something that is barn related in there, and it also looks like there's some, going to be some caves, a waterfall cave sounds particularly interesting. So hopefully, that will be much more in the vein of what we're looking for, so that will be cool. But um, I'm going to hold off on being too worried and or too disappointed, I think, until I actually see what's going on there. But for this sort of thing, I don't think I'll be in a tearing rush once the actual update comes out to build in either the lobby or the uh, atrium. I probably won't bother. I might do some stuff in the interim on the PTS, but when it actually comes out, I'll probably just go down the road of turning the uh, entrance, the uh, utility room rather, the basic one, into kind of a bat cave, something like that, because it's going to work best in that space, and I'm not blown away enough by the other stuff to uh, want to go to town on it. That being said, once the other options come out, maybe I'll look into those a bit more, and there's a bit more variety and flexibility to build, so that's cool. Things like this craziness of being able to float your chair like this, I think this is probably deliberate to... Uh, take the handcuffs off a little bit because see the building system in the main game the existing camp system is predicated on the idea that you can blueprint and move 
that is the main reason for a lot of the restrictions. That's why you can't do things like this, because the game needs to know how things interact in order to recreate your camp in a new location. It's also why we have problems with some things as well. So that's why these restrictions can be lifted in here, because these are always exactly the same. It doesn't matter. You can't, it doesn't matter where you move it, because you're not on that main server, so the environment's not affecting it. So that's probably going to stay as it is. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble a little bit now, so basically reasonably pleased to see there's a lot more flexibility than I thought in this. On down the line with additional spaces, it looks like it'll be even more freedom to get properly creative, although these vaults, maybe not quite so much. Definitely need to do something about the fact that the walls don't match up and they're different sizes, and we definitely need a vault building set, although I'd be very surprised if we don't get one. One other thing that I didn't go over here actually is that the existing vault stairs that we do have in the camp system, currently not available in the PTS. Go figure. The, about the only place, in my personal opinion, that I would ever want to use those is in a vault. And they're not available. I imagine that's going to change on down the line, but uh, yeah, that's just a, a PTS idiosyncrasy, I think. So that's basically my feeling on the subject for now. I'm feeling a little bit more optimistic than I was. Uh, hopefully over the course of the weekend I'll be able to squeeze some kind of small build in, and we'll see what happens. I think I'll try and start with the utility room, seeing as that's what everybody's going to have access to first. But yeah, mixed feelings... Not as disappointed as I was on Thursday anymore. As as I play a bit more and I have a bit of a fiddle around with it, I'm finding more and more flexibility that I didn't know was there. I think it's going to change up the way we have to think, so that's going to take a little bit of adapting to. But it's also a good thing. It means there's increased flexibility over what I thought. So I'm really pleased to be saying better things today than I was on Thursday. But yeah, having some more positive feelings about this is definitely a step in the right direction. I'm a lot more happy about that. And I very much look forward to seeing what subsequent buildable areas are like, because vaults are all well and good, but when you've done a vault, you've done a vault. And building a house inside a vault, I mean, yeah, I suppose you can go to town on it, really, but it's not for me. <laughs> Let's just say that much. So yeah, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic about it again, so that's good. So, I think that's everything I've basically got to say about this for the moment. Obviously, uh, I'm going to try and get a build of some description out, probably in the utility room, over the course of the weekend. So, uh, notifications will let you know how I get on with that, and uh, social media as well, so not too bad. Some workarounds were required to get this video actually up and running, so there's definitely some issues still with the test server there, and I'll have some feedback to pass on to Bethesda, so... That's about what you'd expect for a PTS, but yeah, all in all, cautiously optimistic, so... As I'm now clearly going around in circles, I'll leave this here. If we have got any extra thoughts, I'll try and let you guys know. Drop into one of the live streams if you get the chance. We'll have a, a natter about it. I'm probably not going to be playing with this stuff on live stream. I'll stick to the live servers for that. When the subsequent Brotherhood of Steel stuff comes out in a few weeks' time, again, I'm still on the fence, but I'm kind of still leaning towards I don't want to ruin the story for myself. But anyway, for now, thank you guys very much for watching. I do hope you found this interesting and informative. If you did, please do drop likes and subs. It's always very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, if you haven't already, down in the description if you're interested in such things. And channel memberships on the blue join button as well if you want to support the channel that way. It's humongously helpful and appreciated. So massive thanks to everybody who's done that. So yeah, drop in on the live streams if you get a chance playing this. Had a, a really good fun time playing Horizon Zero Dawn this week as well. So I hope you'll join us for that. It's getting pretty darn cool, that game. Very, very impressed. So I do hope you drop in and join us for those streams as well. For now, I'll say thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.